Jeff, Roland. It's a pleasure to have you guys here, and I'm kind of excited now that we have this 1954 TFMG here. And and the story you told me was so intriguing that I thought it was worth you know making this little tape and talking about it. And so I'm going to start with you, Jeff. How long has the car been in your family? Well, my dad bought this car in 1974 when I was 14, and. Uh, my dad was a practicing dentist in Glendale, California at the time, and he bought it from, well, why don't you tell him? Brought it from a patient of mine called Rita Guffin. <laughs> I remember that. Seems strange. Uh, she was a, uh, um, uh, did uh, cloisonne as did, a hobby. She did what? Cloisonne, uh, glass on, 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 um, yeah, porcelain on brass. You, you take a vase made out of brass with, and then you paint it with porcelain, and it, and then they fire the whole thing. It's an art form. Get, wow. Yeah, so it's pretty crazy. Well, that was real interesting. Yes. And, and she, owned, she had owned the car for a while, and she told me that she always intended to fix it up. It, it was a beautiful car. It didn't have any scratch, scratches or, or any problem, but the paint had badly oxidized, and it looked terrible and the seats had gotten too much sun and, th and they were cracking and breaking up and and she said well if, if you want it why don't you buy it from me and then you fix it up I, I'm, I'm not going to do it i've always thought i would but i never did well, well and what color was it when you got it it was gray gray so is that and it never been painted before no all right so you rolled it into the garage in 1974 right yep you and you and jeff and you guys kind of did a project together. Yes, we did. Yes. And so, can you tell me a little bit what you guys did? Sure. We didn't need to do an awful lot to the car. It was in really good fundamental condition. Yeah. So we just cleaned everything up, took things apart and, and cleaned them and put them back together again. And then, of course, we put chrome wheels on it because it had painted wheels. Didn't well, right. We... The <laughs> Dad was not at the time you couldn't get chrome wires for it, and so they came painted silver. So Dad and I took all the spokes completely apart, took each spoke, chucked it up into a little lathe, <laughs> took emery paper, polished each spoke individually. <laughs> Sorry. Polished the center of it, and then took it to Pico Rim and Wheel in Los Angeles, who were the only people at the time who who dealt with the balancing and everything of that, and they put them all together and put tires on it. And, you know, those tires lasted for, gosh, 45 years. We just replaced them here last year. That was what I was going to ask next, are those, those tires from 45 years ago? No, no, these are brand new from Les Schwab. <laughs> They're only, you know, about a year old. And so... Did, so, did you do the interior or did you have it done? Dad had it done by a guy named Joe Nam Nam. Say it again. Joe Nam Nam. He was as Occidental as you or I. Dad was very, he was an interesting guy. And uh, Joe made everything. He, he did the upholstery, he did the tonneau covers, did the main cover. And uh, okay. yeah, it was. I imagine that you attended to any mechanical issues. Yeah, there weren't any. The car ran great for the past 45 years. So you've never had the head off? No, the head, I. About 10 years ago, I rebuilt the cylinder head. The short block is original. The rear end is original. The transmission, Dad had it rebuilt in 74. So, it would, uh, can I ask if the, uh, the sump has been off the pan? Have you taken that off? No. Nope. No. Nope. Because it, it has hardly any seepage on it. I mean, it's right. absolutely amazing. For an MG, it's, what's yes. that expression, Jeff? Oh, right. If right, British car doesn't leak oil, that means it's out of oil. So, <laughs> Jeff, yeah. that's an old phrase I've heard that before. Yep. Um, and so we're here now, and uh, 50 years later, and you're deciding that it's time. Yep. Yeah, we've had the car for 50 years. Last year, I had the carburetors completely rebuilt. Uh, I mean, totally new shafts, new plates, everything. Wow. And, he, and the guy actually uh, put a non-corrosive coating on it. A, a corrosive resistant painting on the outside of the bodies and everything so wow you can take a picture of those those look very nice well, we'll and they good. work great and uh, okay but it was amazing the car the, we didn't touch the carburetors for 45 years and the car always just fired up and ran great and 
been very reliable. These uh, Brooklyn uh, windscreens that you have on it, you added those to the car? I did. I just put those on maybe uh, 10 years ago or so. Okay. And uh, I had always fought the TFs with the nice double cowls and everything. And the other issue, of course, was when I sit in the car with the stock windscreen, dead in the center of my vision is that top chrome bar. So I'm always you know, doing this. To, and and, be, and the, there was less wind with the stock screen, but a lot more buffeting. It, you know, the air would come up and just do a hole. And so it was always very noisy to, to drive anyway. So and you kept the stock windscreen? I have top. the stock windscreen for it. You mentioned the top is still on the car, and yes. it's, it's in good order? Well, we, good enough. Yeah, it's well. We, I, I've, I've never driven the car in the rain. I don't think anybody else ever has. No. I couldn't run it with the top up because my head was poking. You know, you've got to do this and peer through the windscreen. And so, I, for me, there was never a point to having a top on it anyway. And I did consider taking it off to give you a little bit more room in the back there, but I never did. And it's probably better that way for. But you, you brought the stock windshield in. Absolutely. I have the stock windshield and uh, we have the stock radiator. I, I put a Ron Davis racing aluminum radiator in it also. But you brought the stock radiator. Got the stock radiator right here and two totes full of 50 years of detritus that accumulates when you have these cars. You know, everything from shop manuals to, you know. Roland, Roland how many miles do you think you put on the car? Not that many. No, Dad zeroed the speedometer back in the day in 74. So, so that's 34,000. Yeah, it's got, so it's, so it's 3,400. Oh, 3,400. So yeah. between the two of you in 50 years, you put whatever the speedometer reads today. Right. All right, is there anything else that you would want to know? Oh, when you were doing the uh, cosmetic restoration, that's what I'm gonna call it, because you didn't do a frame off. No, it wasn't a frame off, the body stuff, the body tub stayed bolted to the chassis. Okay, so you painted it, it was the chassis was still attached, so... Correct. Okay. Yeah, we didn't repaint the frame rails or anything like that. Uh, none of that needed it. Okay. And uh, when we got the car, it, it went to the body shop. Dad sent it to the best body shop in Glendale, California, which was Bistain Body Works. And he specified that they, there weren't any collision dents, but it was like if you would put, you know, you push on the fender just enough to make it warp a little bit. And he specified when he got it back, he didn't want any primer or any Bondo on it. And so it came back in bare metal. And I, it struck me at the time, it looks like somebody's taken a heavy grinder to, you know, the, it was scored. But so they reshaped, they didn't have to do a lot of, you know, shaping on it. but you know, right along these edges on both front fenders and a little bit maybe on the rear. Rolling. And so there is no Bondo on this car. There's nothing but primer and glazing putty. But, 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 but Roland, that was a whole bunch of money on an MG. <laughs> well, we didn't buy it to make money on it. Or to, uh, <laughs> we bought it because we love the car. Okay. Uh, I, had, I had had a, a TD when I was in college. It was two, two years before this one. Uh, and I, I drove all, drove it all, all the hell, and uh, I enjoyed the car, but I always loved the TF. And when this TF came available from this friend of mine, I bought it. And it's been in the family 50 years. 50 years this year. Yeah. That's going to be uh, good to be doing this, and kind of tough too. It is. It's I uh, getting a little wistful today, <laughs> going, you know, gosh, that was the. Gosh, when I drove it over to Ted's, that's the last time all I've ever driven the car. And yeah. we, my brother and I drove this car, well, not not that much, because it only has, you know, 3,300 miles on it. But, uh, but um, I, I, I noticed that uh, it is uh, not like driving a brand new Mustang or something like that. That's the other thing, yeah. When we started driving, you know, once we had the carburetors rebuilt and everything, you know, was checked out on the car, and I'm driving it down the road, and my brother and I had the exact same experience. It's like, yeah. I remember this car. I, we used to drive the piss out of this thing. It was fun as heck, you know. And now, gosh, it seems so gutless and it's so wallowy in those <laughs> Armstrong shocks, which we refilled with oil and everything. Yeah. 
don't work very well at all. And you know, it's uh, so it, it's hardly a modern sports car. It, what it does best is what it's doing right now, sitting there looking pretty. And uh, but if you if you're going, you know, 45, it's great. Do it all day long. So uh, it is a very unique MG experience, and it's not yes. been modified, and not been modernized, not been sanitized. No, the only thing I've done to it is with the windscreen and the and the radiator. Right. And Any last words that we would want to add that might be important? Uh, the first time you drive it and warm it up, you'll notice that the temperature gauge reads high. It starts in the middle of the gauge. That's zero. Huh. And then as you drive it around and when it's fully warmed up, you look at it and you go, oh gosh, it's, it's overheating. No, it's not overheating. That's, uh, that's one thing the mechanic did is he let it warm completely up and then took a temperature, a temperature gun, went over the whole motor with it. And he said, no, the only place it's hot is, is right where the temperature sender is, which is right when it dumps into the radiator. So that's going to be the hottest point anyway. Okay. So the gauge works, but it's not in the proper place of the gauge. So don't panic. It, it's not overheating. All right. Well, I parked it uh, for the weekend, and it, it does drip a little bit of oil, but a lot less than any MG I've ever been around. Oh, tremendous. And yep. I think we're, we're batting 100 here. Yep. All right. Been a great car. It's been a, yeah. It sounds like it's been a great car. And, it and, and I think someone else will, will discover the same thing. I hope so. All right. Jeff Rowland, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Ted. All right.